How do Apple and Samsung's most recent flagship tablets compare? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Apple iPad Air versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition. The two current tablet kings, Samsung and Apple, recently released their most impressive tablets yet, the Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition and the iPad Air. We've now reviewed both tablets, and they each received respectable scores. But which is the better buy? Is Samsung's productivity and multitasking focused tablet more capable, or does Apple's famed content selection still give the iPad a slight advantage? That's what we're here to find out. Both Samsung and Apple took the last year to redesign their flagship models. The Galaxy Note 10.1 bears a strong resemblance to its much smaller sibling, the Galaxy Note 3. It features sharp edges, more squared corners, and aligned faux metal trim instead of the faux brushed metal trim. The backside is also made of a faux leather plastic. The iPad Air now sports the same exact design as the iPad Mini. The tapered edges have been traded for rounded edges with a chamfered trim along the front. It's prettier, slimmer, and lighter than all full-sized iPads before it. Speaking of size and weight, the physical footprints of the iPad Air and the new Note 10.1 are remarkably similar. The Galaxy Note 10.1 measures 243mm wide, 171.4mm tall, and 7.9mm thick. The iPad Air is 3.1mm narrower, 1.9mm shorter, and only 0.4mm thinner. The biggest difference is weight. The iPad Air, at only one pound, is unbelievably lightweight. That's 478 grams to the Note 10.1's 540 grams. The more interesting part? While producing a marginally smaller and notably more lightweight device, Apple was still able to capture an in-hand feel like no other. The Galaxy Note 10.1 feels nice, but not incredible. It still has that hint of a toy-like feel, but far less so than previous models. The iPad Air is undeniably Apple's most premium tablet yet. Looking inside these tablets, the contrasts are far more obvious. The Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition comes with some monster specifications, at least comparatively. The iPad Air, for example, has 1GB of RAM. The Note 10.1 has triple that. Both come in either 16, 32, or 64GB capacities, though the iPad also comes in 128GB option, while the Note 10.1 has a microSD expansion slot for an additional 64GB. The iPad Air has a 5 megapixel camera while the Note 10.1 has an 8 megapixel shooter. They also come with comparable batteries inside. The Note 10.1 with a 31 watt hour battery and the Air with a 32.4 watt hour cell. And the iPad Air comes with an A7 chipset, which is composed of a quad core GPU and a dual core CPU clocked at 1.4 GHz. The Exynos 5 Octa inside the Note 10.1 is composed of two quad core CPUs one clocked at 1.9 GHz and the other at 1.3, and a hexa-core GPU. Finally, the displays. At 9.7 inches, the iPad Air's Retina display comes with a resolution of 2048 by 1536 pixels for a total density of 264 pixels per inch. The 10.1-inch Super Clear LCD on the Note 10.1 bears an even higher resolution, 2560 by 1600 pixels, with a density of 299 pixels per inch. Suffice it to say, if you're having to choose between these two, no matter which you choose, you're going to walk away with a beautiful display. The Galaxy Note 10.1's panel is a higher resolution and therefore more crisp and sharp. The iPad's smaller and slightly lower res panel is more true to life and accurate, yet both are comparable in brightness, contrast, and viewing angle. You can't really go wrong with either display, though we favor the Note 10.1's display for one main reason, aspect ratio. At 4.3, the iPad's display still isn't perfect for video playback but that's truly a minor issue. Lest we forget, the Note 10.1 comes with an integrated stylus tucked away in its upper right corner. Paired with the Wacom digitizer, it's far more accurate and useful than the run-of-the-mill capacitive stylus one might use with the iPad. Not to mention it comes with its own software suite. Frankly, both of these tablets sport great hardware and specifications. However, we have to give the hardware and design edge to the iPad for the far superior build quality and appearance but know that it's only a slight edge. We like the Note 10.1's display more and the fact that it comes with an inductive stylus. Software between these two tablets in particular is a tough subject to tackle. We could talk for days about how poorly optimized and over-encumbered the TouchWiz software is. We could also praise the amount of content, games, apps, movies, and television, music, books, magazines, etc. available to the iPad for hours on end. And to be fair, those are very valid points not to be overlooked. The iPad has a virtually endless supply of content, beautiful content, 
and access to one of the most expansive digital catalogs, period. The tablet app situation on Android is maturing quite rapidly, but there's still admittedly room for further growth and improvement. But these are tablets, and unlike their smaller smartphone relatives, they have a whole lot of display real estate to work with. To be blunt, the Galaxy Note 10.1 makes better use of the additional pixels by allowing multiple applications to run side by side with the multi-window software feature. Further, using the S Pen and its software suite, you can open multiple floating applications atop the current running application, meaning you can have a total of upwards of six applications running at once, theoretically. With the iPad, sadly, you cannot. Only one application can run at a time. However, the iPad uses multitasking gestures to make switching between applications quicker and rather intuitive. A four-finger swipe upwards reveals the task switcher menu. Four finger swipes left and right will switch between recent apps in chronological order of being opened. And a five-finger pinch will bring you back home. Sadly, while Samsung has gone the extra mile to make better use of the display, it somehow failed to optimize the notification shade for additional real estate. Both TouchWiz and the iPad version of iOS 7 are nothing more than scaled up versions of the software found on the Note 10.1s and iPad Air's smaller counterparts, the Note 3 and the iPhone. Yet it's impossible to overlook the amount of innovation Samsung has done, like it or not. Things like Smart Say, Smart Pause, Smart Rotate, and Smart Scroll allow you to control the tablet to some extent without ever touching it. And that's really only the beginning of the Note 10.1 software features. For a more in-depth look at these, be sure to check out our full review of the Galaxy Note 3 and Note 10.1 on the PocketNow site. It's difficult to call either tablet a winner here. The Note 10.1 is undeniably more advanced and optimized for tablet use, but it also comes with a ton of bloat that many may never take advantage of. The iPad on the other hand is little more than a scaled up iPhone, yet it comes with a bevy of applications, games, and other content which is beautifully optimized for the tablet form factor. The ironic part in all this? While Samsung spent its time building tablet software, it clearly threw performance to the wind. The Exynos 5 Octa chipset is a powerful combination of CPUs and GPU. It posts numbers and synthetic benchmarks with some of the best, but in real world performance, things aren't so cheery. Through intensive multitasking, the tablet stutters and lags, even completely freezing from time to time. And sometimes something as simple as opening a pin window and flipping between home screens is enough to make it drop frame rates dramatically. We've installed the latest firmware, which brought multi-user support, but no notable improvements in performance. The iPad, with its seemingly meager dual-core CPU, is the complete opposite. It's always snappy. Applications open quickly, switching between applications happens the instant you use the four-finger gesture, and it's virtually impossible to bog this tablet down. In benchmarks, both perform well, though we're not typically inclined to believe the story benchmarks tell, since we don't live in a vacuum. Fortunately, the Note 10.1's performance woes don't carry over into gaming or multimedia playback. In fact, it's fantastic in that regard, as is the iPad Air. Speaker performance is sort of the same story. The Galaxy Note 10.1 speakers have a slight advantage in two areas, location and volume. They're noticeably louder than the speakers on the Air, and being positioned on opposite ends of the tablet, they provide true stereo sound. The iPad Air speakers, both found along the bottom edge, only separated by the lightning port, are not quite as loud, yet provide a more full sound with more emphasis on the low end. Battery life, however, is far more comparable between these tablets, at least while in use. During our time with the tablets, we were typically able to last about two days to a single charge, and we were unable to kill either tablet in a single day. No complaints there. That said, the iPad Air was particularly great at standby, only dropping 1-2% charge over an 8-hour span. Over the same length of time, the Note 10.1 typically dropped anywhere from 10-20%. to 20%. Lastly, the cameras. The Note 10.1 may come with an 8 megapixel camera, but out of the box is set to capture images at 6 megapixels for the 16:9 aspect ratio. The iPad shooter is only 5 megapixels. The Note stock camera app comes with quite a few more software options out of the box particularly in image stabilization software for low-light shots and real-time filters. Frankly, none of this matters. One, these are tablets, and they're not optimal for taking pictures in the first place. Two, the iPad's camera is, simply put, better. In general, it provides images with more contrast, better, more accurate colors, and more detail. The Note 10.1, just as we found in our review, was susceptible to blurry images thanks to a slight shutter lag. If you need a better camera in your tablet, for whatever reason, the iPad is the winner here, but not by a lot. A smartphone will ultimately take better pictures in just about any scenario. What it boils down to is, the iPad is a far more well-rounded tablet. Samsung has come a very, very long way in the past year, 
and the Note 10.1 2014 edition is evidence of just that. It's an impressive leap for Samsung and has us hopeful for the future of Galaxy Note tablets, but the Note 10.1 is unmistakably poorly optimized. The Exynos 5 Octa chip is problematic, and we can't help but feel it would be a different story if Samsung opted for Qualcomm's Snapdragon 800 chip in this Wi-Fi model over its in-house brand. But that's not the case, and once again Apple walks away the victor in the tablet space, at least in terms of the final product. It's lighter, thinner, faster, more reliable, and performs incredibly. That said, we'd like to see Apple adopt some more tablet-friendly software, maybe true multitasking in the not-too-distant future. That's going to wrap up this comparison. If you enjoyed the video, click the thumbs up button below to let us know, and leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. Subscribe to the channel to see more videos in the future from myself and the rest of the Pocket Now team, and follow us in all the usual places, Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at Pocket Now. I'm Taylor Martin, you can find me on Twitter at Casper Tech, and I will see you next time.